My name is Mike Black, and I'm a wildlife biologist with the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife. And I'd like to welcome you to this introductory video on the North Bank Habitat Management Area. If you're not familiar with that particular area, it's a piece of ground that was purchased by the Roseburg District of the BLM, primarily for habitat for the Columbia white-tailed deer. It also offers quite a bit of recreational opportunity, including controlled hunts for uh, big game. Through this video, we hope to provide you some background information on uh, deer management as well as habitat management for white-tailed deer and give you kind of a basic orientation on how to find the place. Once you get there, uh, so you won't get lost, so you'll know where the boundaries are and uh, give yourself uh, an opportunity to have a good enjoyable trip. For those of you that have controlled hunt tags, uh, the video here will satisfy your need for all the training and orientation you need to have a successful hunt out there. So please watch all of this in its entirety before your hunt. In the portion of the video that comes up next, uh, Jerry Myers, who's a district wildlife biologist for the Bureau of Land Management, uh, will provide you some background information on how the BLM acquired that property, kind of give you some insight on uh, what their plans are for management, and then give you some specific information on where you can find things, where the access points are, uh, where you can camp, and some other unique characteristics of that particular piece of property. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Uh, as Mike mentioned, I'm Jerry Myers. I'm a wildlife biologist with the Roseburg District Bureau of Land Management. Uh, the North Bank Habitat Management Area is a rather unique area. It's about 6,600 acres or a little over 10 square miles that uh, the Bureau picked up on a land exchange in 1994. Uh, the area is known locally as the Dunning Ranch and uh, many people still recognize it by that name. However, in the various regulations, you'll see the North Bank Habitat Management Area as the um, principal name for the area. You'll also see some of our large signs out there when you get out to the area. Uh, BLM acquired the property through this land exchange process with a private company. And basically what the Bureau was trying to do was obtain uh, habitat for the Columbian white-tailed deer. It's a federally endangered species. As Mike uh, noted before, there's limited populations. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service had uh, designated the Columbian white-tail as endangered in 1973. And as part of the uh, criteria for getting it delisted or taking off the, taking off the endangered species list, we were supposed to have at least 5,500 acres of secure habitat. When the Bureau obtained the Dunning Ranch, or what is now known as the North Bank Habitat Management Area, we satisfied the requirement for the secure acres. And the animal is now being moved towards being taken off the endangered species list. It has already been taken, taken off the uh, state list. And if you're familiar at all with this part of Oregon, the uh, ranch or the uh, management area is located uh, east of Wilbur, which is a small community located between Roseburg and Sutherland. You can access it off of Holden Highway 99. You turn uh, east on County Road 200, which is known as the North Bank, uh, North Bank Road, and that uh, best landmark for the beginning of that road is the Whitaker Truck Shop or Alcan Aluminum. You begin to see the ranch at about milepost 5 and milepost 5.3 you'll see a gate that says Jackson Ranch Access. You'll see various other signs along the fence line there and that indicates that that property line is the uh, property belonging to the North Bank Management Area. Some of the signs uh, will uh, show you the uh, specific boundaries. We have uh, signs up with the adjacent landowners. We have signs along the county road which uh, indicate that that is public land. There are some turnouts and you'll see some uh, white signs, regulatory signs, stuff like that on the uh, signposts that are out there. You have approximately a half to three quarters of a mile of access frontage along the county road from milepost five on down. And if you continue further on North Bank Road, you'll come back into the boundaries again at about milepost 10. And there are two miles of river or um, 
county road access onto the management area. Uh, you'll see various turnouts and various signs that will show you where you're at. Now, when BLM finalized the uh, exchange process, the title turned over to the federal government. It, the management area at that time was designated as an area of critical environmental concern. And under that designation, we recognized the area for its outstanding uh, qualities. Not only was it Colombian white-tailed deer habitat, but it also furnished some unique habitats that are in jeopardy, such as, say, the white oak uh, complex. And we also have a number of state-sensitive wildlife species and some federal and state-sensitive uh, plants on the area. So overall, it came in to being as an area to be managed primarily for these uh, attributes. And North Bank's currently open to non-motorized recreation, and I've emphasized the non-motorized. We have kept the vehicle use down in order to maintain the area to limit damage. The only motorized access that we're allowing is for management or for research needs. But the area is open to the general public throughout the year for things such as hiking, mountain biking, uh, horseback riding, nature study, bird watching, uh, school groups, this sort of thing. And as Mike mentioned, uh, hunting is a valuable recreational pursuit in this area and we are trying to maintain that option for management. This area is not a recreation area, it is a wildlife management area. However, rec the recreation is allowed on it up to the point where it may interfere with our management for Columbian white-tailed deer, the primary objectives for which we obtained the, the property. And uh, due to the size of the area, there's a significant potential for um, research. In fact, we have several research projects that have gone on in the last couple of years that are being completed. Basically, the area is open to the public with some constraints. Uh, we do want to manage for Columbian white-tailed deer. We want to manage for other wildlife species. But there is a wide potential for different uses to take place out there that don't conflict with the uh, main objectives. There are maps that are available of the area uh, at the main reader board at the main gate at milepost 12. And if you get out there, we can just say, you know, have a good time, enjoy the uh, the area and uh, the hope that you become an active participant in management and enjoying the, uh, the area. As a species, white-tailed deer are widely distributed throughout the North American continent. In fact, they're the most common big game species we have here in North America. Of the group of white-tailed deer, there are several subspecies of which two occur here in Oregon. One is in the northeast corner, and it is the most abundant of the white-tailed deer we have. The other one is uh, the Columbia white-tailed deer, which we have here in Oregon, and a few survive uh, in a little section of Washington along the Columbia River. At one time, these white-tailed deer were more widely distributed. Uh, they ranged from the valleys of western Washington through the Willamette Valley, and we believe in portions of the Umpqua and Rogue Basin. Um, because white man came and settled the lowland elevation, which was primarily the habitat for these white-tailed deer, uh, their numbers drastically reduced as the white man population increased. And they reduced to the point where these two isolated populations are the only ones that are left. The Roseburg population, which is by far the most abundant, still only has about 6,000 animals. And they're concentrated in an area around Roseburg going up around Glide and including the North Bank habitat area. The other population along the Columbia River is less than 1,000 animals. And because both of these populations are isolated and relatively small compared to their historical numbers, uh, they kind of dictate considerable management direction from us to make sure that they're here long term and the populations don't become in any more jeopardy than they are right now. Uh, Long-term plans for these animals, hopefully, include reintroduction in some of their former range, the Willamette Valley, and expansion of their range here in the Umpqua Basin. Only time will tell through management practices and uh, uh, our ability to catch these animals and move them uh, will their future be secure long-term. 